Hey everyone, this is a different type of video here today. I'm not looking to monetize this, I'm not looking to sensationalize any of my experiences um, for the last year, uh, but I did want to share what a crazy year this has been. Uh, it's just exactly one year ago uh, this week that I was in Atlanta, Georgia, which capped off two weeks of back-to-back uh, -back travel, which included uh, heading to New Jersey, Pennsylvania, New York City, uh, back to Orlando, then to Houston, then back to Orlando, then to Atlanta, then back to Orlando and to St. O to St. Lucie rather for the Mets. All while this little thing called the coronavirus was starting to rear its head and become more of a thing in everyone's day-to-day -day lives. Now I'd say during that period of time initially in February and March, it was almost like uh, it, it's really grown worthy looking at some of the videos that we did during that time because there were times that I made light of the fact that while we were at like uh, the Mets game where people didn't want to order Corona beer because they were afraid of what repercussions they'd have from Corona or the association with words and just far out there type stuff. And we had no idea what was about to hit because right after the that Mets series, we head into two weeks of quarantine time and thinking like everything's going to be better. And here we are uh, 12 months later and uh, still somewhat in the same boat, but last night I had a very big glimmer of hope. Last night I was able to get my first shot of the Moderna uh, COVID vaccine through Publix. I'm going to get to that in a moment, but just to rewind again, through the course of the last year we head into summertime and uh, you know I think folks were looking to try, try to get out of the houses. We were restless and, and etc. And then we get to September time period and uh, I felt like I was having uh, seasonal type, uh, whether it's allergies or um, upper respiratory infection type stuff. I went to Centricare and lo and behold, I had COVID. And it's not something that I talked about on the channel to date. I've mentioned it on some social channels here and there, um, but the reality is um, I sat in Centricare um, thinking I went there for like an upper respiratory infection in a Z-Pack um, and basically was given this piece of paper that was Xeroxed. You know, if you're in the same age range as me, this looks like what you would have received in like elementary school when you were a kid, which is basically, I tested positive, what next? And the doctor offered the pieces of advice of, well, if you feel like you can't breathe, um, go to the ER. If you think your temperature is too high, go to the ER. Not a lot of qualifications uh, to either of those points. Um, and the first night I went home, um, Mary and Jess tested negative the entire time that I was sick. Um, I had locked myself into a room for quarantine and literally sat on the uh, guest bed thinking, like, is this going to be it? Is, it, this, is this it for me? And um, I know that there's going to be folks that are saying, you know, this is the same thing as the flu and you don't need to do this. I, if you feel like you really feel the need to leave those comments below, then do so. But I can tell you, this was not like the flu. I didn't get hospitalized. Um, I did measure my oxygen level every day, but without the, quali without the qualification of what is deemed as too low, I had uh, oxygen times that were 88, 85, um, and consistently asked by the family and other uh, closer friends, like, how are you doing? Um, is everything okay? And I, I felt like I couldn't breathe, but I thought that it would be worse off in the hospital than being here. And since that time, um, I did get better within two weeks. The other fiasco is that after 10 days of being sick, uh, and not having a fever for 48 hours consecutively, um, you're good to go. And good to go means um, you can return to work, you can return to population and doing things, um, and they don't want you to take another test. And they insisted that I not take another test. So the next COVID test that I had to take, I had to pay out of pocket. Um, it wasn't something that insurance was going to cover because it wasn't medically necessary. So uh, basically told to go back out and uh, mix um, and uh, I think I've since found myself to have a few of the long hauler um, qualifications that you may have heard about on the news where sometimes uh, randomly you, you have difficulty breathing, um, fatigue, 
for an excessive period of time. And I'll tell you, like during the actual COVID period, I mean, it felt like I was just hit by a truck for, you know, the better part of like 10 days. Um, but I could walk 10 miles, feel great, or walk down to the mailbox, which is a block away, and feel completely winded. So um, after going through this and seeing that the rest of the family did not go through this, um, there was definitely a conscious decision to make sure that I don't go through this again, because you can get it again. Um, so when appointments opened up for the COVID vaccine, they're greater than 65 years old. Um, and now I think in Florida, at least, they're also distributing to people that are um, 50 uh, years old or older that are teachers or firemen or, or policemen and stuff, or people that have um, high comorbidities, um, of which I don't qualify for any of those. Um, and I don't want you to think that I took somebody's spot or stole somebody's uh, vaccine here, because that's not the case. From day one of them announcing how they were going to distribute the vaccine and the fact that uh, two out of the three now need to be refrigerated at great temperatures with Pfizer at like, whether it's negative 20 or negative 40 uh, degrees, and Moderna that needs to be refrigerated also. The first thing that jumped out at me was um, there's going to be people at no-show, or there's going to be people in Florida that, uh, or anywhere, that um, have made reservations at multiple sites. And the first site that they've gotten, they're not going to tell the second site, you know, that they're um, going to. And um, as a result, you have extra doses that are just going to sit there. Um, so um, I'm going to be straight up honest. I The first couple of weeks of the, the vaccine going out and seeing, you know, like, hey, I should be going out to like the Orange County Convention Center. Or I should be going to these places to try to get that, that stuff. I didn't do it because I was lazy and I was afraid of rejection. I was afraid of putting in the effort and being told that they didn't have anything for me and I didn't want to have to keep dealing with that on a repetitive basis. Um, as the distribution points expanded to include um, Publix, I think Publix gets like 25% of the vaccinations in Florida at least now, um, as well as other stores, I knew that it was time to start to hit up the locations that were near me. So for the last two weeks, Mary and I have literally hit between four to six different Publix locations every night and also checked in with like the Walmarts um, and other areas to see, you know, almost like you're begging for a dose. Um, you hit them at the end of the night, so the sweet spot, um, they, their last appointment for some of these locations, you'd have to ask for your, you know, you know your mileage may vary here when your last location is, oh, your last uh, appointment is, was, but for us it was 7 o'clock in most cases, and they would dole out those vaccinations through 8 p.m. Um, so it required you getting to the store sometime either between like 6 and 8 o'clock and going to the pharmacy counter on a repetitive basis and saying, hey, I'm just wondering if you had any cancellations or no-shows or had any extra doses today. And um, every single day for two weeks straight, um, it was just rejection, place after place. Some places were really friendly. I think at first it seemed like it, it was almost, um, you know, like I'm sure they're getting hounded by some folks for this type of stuff um, and then you start to see where you, you're almost like forming a bond with the people that are working in the pharmacies um, where they want to be able to help they understand the plight and they know that um, some folks are greatly concerned and let's be real there's a ton of people out there that are still going to say and I think they had on the news tonight that it was like almost like a third of the population is still either uh, hard no on the vaccine or probably not on the vaccine. Um, I'm not in that bucket. After knowing <laughs> what I went through um, in September, I wouldn't wish that on anyone. And just more honesty here, there's no microchip in this vaccine. There's no Bill Gates tracking you and we need to get rid of those ridiculous um, tinfoil hat conspiracy theories. Um, but having said that, last night uh, began, be, became the point where I, I, you know, every night from towards the last couple of nights, it felt really incredibly 
frustrating and like the light was never going to be there at the end of the tunnel. Um, but we hit uh, Publix by us around um, six or so, and they said, you may want to check back around 730. And the stores will tell you that you should probably call, but I'll leave this decision to you. Would you rather rely on not talking to somebody face to face and calling or showing up and at least being there in case they actually say they have something extra. So um, we continue to keep going in person instead of making phone calls because I'd rather trust a direct face-to-face -face conversation than a phone call. Uh, but at 6 o'clock yesterday they said you can check back around 7.30. Um, we made rounds to other locations to see if anyone else had anything. The answer was no. And then we went back to the uh, one specific Publix, and uh, at 7 o'clock they said that they had X amount of appointments for 7, um, but it looked like you may want to stick around. And 7.30 came, um, and they called us over to the pharmacy counter, and it literally was like <laughs> one of these like top-secret um, drug-type things where you don't want to advertise to everybody, but they asked, are you looking for, um, you know, how many extra doses are you looking for? And Honestly, I was looking for one specifically for Mary to make sure at least she was going to get her dose. Um, and they told us that they had two. It's finally happening. I filled out the form. So we both had our vaccines. Um, it goes like any other person that's getting their vaccination at this point for COVID. So they automatically scheduled our second appointment for 28 days out. Um, they give you a shot. Um, it's over quick. There's no lollipop. There's no thing. It's like just like getting a flu shot or any other type of immunization. And um, they give you a card, of which I'm not going to show online because it has your personal information like birth date and first shot date and the actual uh, dosage uh, serial number. And it has a spot for the second dose for you to um, get that filled in as well. Um, and the side effects, they have you sit there for about 15 minutes to make sure that you're not going to pass out or have any adverse effects. Uh, but they do tell you that um, you potentially, especially more so with the second shot than the first shot, um, you will f uh, feel sore in your arm. And today I'll tell you, it feels like I was hit with a baseball bat in my arm. Um, and Mary felt the same way. Um, but uh, I've had a little bit more side effect, I think, than Mary. Um, and th this is attributed, I believe, towards me to do a little bit more research. If you've had COVID in the past, this is like kind of like giving it a booster or um, bringing it back up where I do feel a little bit more uh, woozy. I'm not running a fever or anything like that, um, but a little woozy, a little tired, um, you know, exhaustion type period and I'm just ready to try to call it quits for the day. Um, so I know the second shot supposedly is worse where there's more side effects where you can run a, a low grade fever. Um, as well as, um, you know, the same thing of like wooziness or, or uh, after effects like pain and exhaustion and stuff like that. But we'll deal with that when it comes. For the meantime, um, if you guys are interested, there are support groups online also, like in Facebook of all places. I always think Facebook and Twitter, for lack of a better thing, are almost like cesspools of negative information at times. But for what it is, Facebook has been a great resource of people that are probably you know separated by a geographic location so there's like a Florida vaccine hunter group um, as well as there's vaccine hunter groups for other geographic areas so it's definitely worthwhile to um, check into that if that's something that you're interested in everyone had questions um, you know when I initially said we got the dose like what time did you show up and you know which locations it's definitely a your mileage may vary type thing and you need to be prepared for rejection a lot of rejection um, because uh, you know, obviously everyone is still pushing to try to get the vaccine at the same time. Florida now has an influx of vaccine doses coming. So FEMA is set up at the Orange County Convention Center starting this week. They're looking to do, I think, like 3,000 doses um, a day. And, uh, you know, these are some of those places that it just jumps out like, you know, maybe if you showed up towards the end of the distribution period for the day, you might have luck, um, just like us. And, you know, it's better. I think there's kind of, you know, let me just phrase it this way. I think there's two types of people. There's folks that are going to wait for things to come to them, and there are folks that are going to reach out and try to grab a ring and get something done ahead of time. And if you're concerned or want to get back to some type of normalcy,
and one of the main reasons why I'm doing this is we live in Florida. Um, mask and distancing and those types of things, um, safety guidelines, it, they've really rapidly become fewer and further between. And I like to just have that much less of stress when going into a place that might be potentially crowded or have other people around. So, you know, if you're interested, check out the, the, the Facebook groups, do a Google search for vaccine hunting um, in your geographic area, um, and you're going to find stuff. And you eventually you're going to have success as long as you can deal with some of the rejection. So for us, um, four more weeks, we get our second dose of Moderna. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting back to uh, some semblance of normalcy. doesn't mean that I'm not going to be um, wearing a mask and um, you know, still following the guidelines because you still need to, to do that. But I'll be a little less concerned of the folks that are around me that are not doing the same thing. So in any event, I wanted to share that story with you and the journey and I hope all is well. And uh, on that note, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for all of your likes, comments, and subscriptions. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Have a great night. We'll see you guys.